Good morning, friends. It is early Thursday morning, sometime in January, January, year of our Lord, 2019. And behind me here, I probably have the biggest guitar case I've ever seen. It is huge. It is new project day. There you go. The size of this case, you don't really get the size of it till I come in front of it. It's huge. I mean, the length is not so much, but the width of it, wow. The reason it's big is because of the guitar inside it. And I'm going to show you the guitar. And this one. This is going to be a project and a half, this one. And it is, there you go, it's some kind of Jackson Keller, isn't it? I do know that. It's, uh, oh, I'll explain some more things in a moment. I'll just get it on the bench here. I'm going to bring the seat round again. And, uh, okay, so some guy, a young guy called Darius, contacted me. Was it this week? Might have been earlier this week, saying he'd got this guitar, the Floyd Rose is not right, and this, that, and the other's wrong. He'd actually taken it to a music shop. Uh, some friends of mine over there at Music Scene, Music Scene at Mansfield. And if they ever get anything in that they can't handle or can't deal with, and they only really do set up, but anything else they send to me. And uh, this is one of those occasions. And he had a problem with his Floyd Rose. He's saying it won't stay in tune. I thought, well, straight away, yeah, you've not stretched your strings enough. So how much you stretch your strings? He says once or twice. I says, well, five, try five, six or seven. So that is probably part of it. He also says the B string kept slipping out of the saddle lock here. I said, well, it's probably not tight enough. Um, and that was the case. I've already had a little look at this guitar. I've not done anything major on it. Uh, there's Jackson's back plate there. Don't know if that serial number means anything. I don't know where it was made. Uh, and that knob, that hideous skull tone knob has just fallen off. Anyway, a few other problems with this guitar. It says I could sort out for him. That knob has disappeared. I'm glad about that because I don't mind. Because we're going to change the knobs anyway. Uh, but a few other problems with it. Well, one, it has Duncan designed pickups. Now, I already kind of know what these pickups are. I would imagine they are the HB103 uh, series. Now, Duncan designed pickups are basically Duncan pickups, but they are made cheaper in, uh, oh, I was going to say cheaper, but they're budget pickups and they're made to um, Seymour Duncan specification, but out in um, Korea. So I would imagine that Artec made these. Now, some people like these uh, pickups. I don't. I think they're rubbish. I had some of these in a 1992 Hamer Diablo import slammer series. I, I was bought in 90, 1994, 95, something like that, whatever it was. And they're okay pickups, but they're not good. They're not great. So we've talked about pickup swaps. I've recommended to him some Iron Gears. Iron Gear Dirty Talk in the bridge for great metal and an iron gear rolling mill which is a path style pickup for cleans on the neck you will get those for around about 70 pounds a set delivered so that's the pickups we're going to go with he also said he wanted to change this um tremolo for a floyd rose i says why i says leave that in i'll get it set up properly i'm going to put a trem block in back of there as well so we can just have dive bomb mode it's always going to pull back in tune so why go spend a 200 pound on a tremolo if I can get this working right? So he's agreed with that. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to check the pots over. And this pot's not working, it cuts out halfway through. Music scene had a look at that, got some switch clean in there, switch cleaner in there, it didn't fix the problem. So I'm going to swap out the pots. We'll stick some CTS or some Borns in there. It depends what I've got in stock in my drawer. I've got loads of pots in my drawer. But I've probably not got a tone one, I don't know yet. But I'm going to have a tone one might be all right. Uh, the thing is, the... Uh, Oh, it's all right, it's a normal pot, that's great. Oh, it's a nice little bushing look. So you can just put a, uh, you know, the Allen key type knobs. Where is that school gone? It's completely disappeared. Yeah, it wants to. Don't come near me, does it? Stupid schools. Scrum cross, crossbones, I'll have you. I've got no idea where it's gone. Um, I'll dig it out in a bit. It's disappeared, it'll be about somewhere. I'll cross that later. So we're going to go with the, uh, going to go with some standard speed knobs. I imagine what we got in there. I've got a drawer full of. We'll go with some standard speed knobs. I've got some brand new ones here. Probably charge a pound a piece, pound fifty a piece for something like this. Um, we'll stick some normal ones with that on. Uh, I've not checked the frets yet, so I don't know what work actually extensive work this needs to do. I know we are going to swap the pots. We're going to swap the pickups. I'm going to set the tremolo. Uh, lovely, lovely thick piece of rosewood on this neck. I love a thick piece of rosewood. Fantastic. Nice big jumbo frets. I don't know the situation with the frets at the moment. I also don't know what pots are in there. So we're going to take off all the covers. 
I'm just going to take a fret rock and just check some of these frets while I'm here. Because I don't know if it needs a fret level or anything. There's one high one already. Two high ones already. Okay. I would imagine this is going to need a complete setup. Uh, so it's already going to have an intensive setup. Three, four. Right, this is going to need a fret level. Five, six. We've already got seven high frets on. That's going to need a complete fret level. Now, fret level we'll set up with a tremolo on there. It's going to cost you 100 and, is it 110 quid? I do about four things, 110 quid. A little bit extra for installing the pots, number 20 on there. You're looking at about 130 quid, 135 quid with a new set of strings. And uh, the price of the pickup. So that's going to cost him under 200 pounds. It's going to cost him just about 200 quid, I think. Pickups are going to be 70 quid. Um, so yeah, so that looks like what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I've already tried the tremolo. Uh, I can absolutely get that tremolo set up right. It's a beautiful, like a satin finish. It's a really nice looking tremolo. There's no reason why that tremolo should not hold tune and play perfectly. But I'm still going to put a um, small trem block in there. It's just basically a little 90 degree piece of metal held in with two screws and you've got a bolt with an Allen key thread and a nut to hold it in place and it will basically sit up against the block so it means we can only dive one we can only go down we can't pull back because it's it's pushing against that bolt but that's a great thing it means if you have the springs tighter on the claw um every even if you snap a string it's going to pull right back and all the other strings are going to stay in tune it's like having a fixed bridge with a dive bomb mode on there i'll explain more about that in a little while once i get to it so I'm going to let the owner know what I think with this guitar. I'm absolutely certain I'll get this tremolo set right. Floyd Roses are my thing. I've been setting up Floyd Roses for I don't know how many years. I've been a Floyd Rose fan since round about 1984, the first time I experienced one. And I've been a fan ever since. That is 35 years. So I've been piddling about with Floyd Roses 35 years. I can set a Floyd Rose up with brand new strings on it in around about 30 minutes from scratch. Uh, give it a good 45 minutes and you're laughing, aren't you? I charge £25 for a Floyd Rose setup just on its own. Why you just want the Floyd Rose setting up just on its own though? Because you're going to need the rest of the guitar setting up. But that's what I do. If you're already having some work done, I will charge you an extra £15 for a Floyd Rose. So uh, I'm going to price this all up. I'm going to look at the electrics. We've also got the price of the pots to go on and the uh, tremolo block and the pickups i would be thinking we're going to be around about 100 pounds for that around about 125 pounds later it's going to cost him 225 quid but he's going to get a fantastic superbly supremely playable guitar with level and recount crowned frets and it's he's going to love it if this is his thing he's absolutely going to love it um not my thing anymore I, there was a time i was going to buy a jackson kelly and I'm kind of glad I didn't because I've moved on from that now and I'm quite a bit of a, I've moved, I've changed quite a lot from being, don't forget I was in a punk metal band, Concrete Socks, it was my band I started in 1984 and I've played punk and metal, well heavy metal probably for most of my life but I've moved on a bit now and I only play in church now and I play worship music and my main guitars, I do have an Edwards Explorer with, with, with um, active pickups which is great for metal but I, I have Fenders, I have a Fender Telecaster and a Fender Strat now and my Fender Telecaster is my favourite guitar. Anyway, I digress, I move on. We're not talking about my guitars, we're talking about this one. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get the back plates off, I'm going to have a look inside. I've had this plugged in. And it plays great, it sounds rubbish. Those pickups are crap. They are Duncan's and Ardex, but a lot of people on Mahima Fan Club, I'm a member of Mahima Fan Club, I've been there for years, and a lot of people give these a good rep. I don't, I think they're weak. But not for a metal, certainly not for a metal guitar. It's supposed to be based on the Seymour Duncan Distortion SH. Is it the SH6? It's supposed to be based on that. They sound nothing like them. They sound rubbish. They sound like cheap, uh, cheap Chinese pickups to me. So we're going to get some good pickups in there. I'm going to go to Iron Gear. I have. This is one of my favourite pickups. Iron Gear Dirty Talk. That's a brilliant pickup. I've got one there. It's supposed to be going in my strap. I've also got one. I've not even tried yet. This has not been anything. This is a Tone Rider Generator. These are all F-spaced. I had one of these in a client guitar. These sound amazing. This would be perfect for this guitar. I wonder if he wants a Zebra. You know, we could go with that. I could use this as a test guitar, couldn't I, for that pickup. Be a fantastic pickup in there. Um, so I've not decided yet. Probably going to go with Iron Gears, because I know they're good, I know we've got a good rep, and they're quite cheap. So, 
you know, I'll do a bit of digging. Uh, we're going to get some bits off this guitar. What's a new pickup in there? I might have one knocking about in stock. Okay, and like I say, I'm going to have a look at the electrics and I'll be back very shortly with an update. Okay, so I have uh, taken them back off, looked at the parts. They're just two standard generic no-name pots in there, probably made in China. Um, I've had some of these myself. I bought a batch of them, quite cheap. And they work and they're decent, but they don't last long. So we're going to swap them out. The original three-way I'm going to keep in there. Uh, I can work around that. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to go with I have a brand new Gibson volume pot there. These are about 13 quid. Uh, it's not been in a guitar uh, but it is opened. Um, I will show you the gubbins there. Uh, so I'm going to do I'm going to put that one in for the volume because it's a great pot. Uh, plus I don't have a guitar for it anyway. So I'm only going to charge him 10 quid for that. And I have here a brand new <coughs> Alpha Tone Pot. I'm going to go with an Alpha because Alpha make good pots. Um, so that is going to go in. Beautiful one. Uh, really, really nice. I think these are about four or five quid. So uh, I'm not going to charge a lot for that. I'll be going, capacitor wise, I'll be going with my favourite capacitors. These are 1960s or even 1950s. New old stock. They're old stock, but they're new. I bought a batch of these last year. These are my favorite capacitor I stick these in all of my own guitars I use these rather than orange drops so that's gonna be a couple of quid for that two or three quid um, what else tremolo block now the tremolo block I'm gonna explain it you've got the block there and this sits inside and it's got a screw and the screw pushes against this block there and it stays in position and that block the big tremolo block there pushes against it like so it means you can only go that way you can only go down you can't pull the tremolo back because it hits that bolt and this is the gubbins and these are 11 quid I got this from Turkey I believe someone's building them in Turkey used to get them just from Floyd upgrades but that's the job and they say this is a block you could go dive bomb down but when it comes back it hits that bolt there because you adjust this bolt on this screw and that holds it in place and we just affix that to the guitar base with these two screws so that is going to go on there. I've noticed it also needs new pickup rings because these two are split and cracked. I may have some in stock, I may not. Uh, this is really uncomfortable because this, when I play, this catches my fingers. You've got a big chip there and you've got a crack there on each corner. I will also replace these screws. Um, I'll have some in stock somewhere because they're a little bit rusty and crap or I'll just clean them up. Um, so that is what we're doing. The knobs are coming off. We're going to go with standard speed knobs. Did I show them before? Can't remember. We're just going to go with a couple of these. If they don't fit, we'll make them fit. Just a standard couple of speed knobs. Now, the owner has asked that I move the volume out of the way and put that where the tone is, the tone where the volume is. I'm a little bit reluctant to do that because I believe you need to grab your volume. So I think once these stupid skull knobs are out of the way, um, we can go with just regular knobs in the right position. So that's what I'm inclined to do. I could have a look to see what gold ones look like. Um, you never know. Regarding pickups, definitely going to go with Iron Gear, Dirty Talk. And I'm wondering if the owner wants, I've got this, it's brand new. He could have this from me, save me ordering one. If he wants a zebra configuration, I think it'll look pretty nice. Put two, two zebra pickups in there and we'll go and buy either a rolling mill or a the blues engine. Blues engine might be nice in there as well. Uh, I'm going to do some research and see what I think. I will charge it in cost for the dirty talk, so I'm not out for making money on it. I just do not have a guitar for it right now. Um, so I think that is probably an option. If you want an all black one, I'll keep this and I'll go and order him an all black one. So hardware wise, a Gibson volume pot, a Alpha tone pot, the three way switch we're going to keep. We're going to put a trem uh, lock device in there behind the tremolo. We're going to order two new pickup rings unless I have some in my parts drawer down here. I've got bits and bobs knocking about all over. Don't look like I've got any anymore. Uh, no, I've got to go and order. So I've got one. That's not enough, is it? That will... It's a slanted one anyway. We need a straight one. So I'm going to order some pickup rings. They're going to be about five or six quid, I reckon. Um, so that's what I do with tremolo to me. I think the tremolo is going to be absolutely fine. Ideally, it would have a, um, 
a steel block. I may have a real Floyd Rose steel block knocking about somewhere. If that fitted, maybe we could fit that to it. I don't know yet. We'll have to see. Um, then again, it'll, it'll be okay. Tone-wise, we're going to get the tone. I'm more convinced now that tone comes from pickups rather than um, anything else, rather than wood or anything, because I, I've done a test on different woods, tone woods, and it doesn't really cut the mustard with me, but pickups do make a difference more than anything. Electrics are electrics, a capacitor is a capacitor. A pot, maybe a pot is a pot, but they are better built pots and they are better made capacitors. Uh, how much it makes, how much difference it makes to the tone, I'm undecided about that at the moment. But anyway, what I'm going to do next with this guitar is I'm going to get the strings off. We're going to go across the neck with a fret rocker and we're going to check all of the frets to see how many uneven frets we have. Any more than five, it's going to be a complete fret level. I already know this is going to be a complete fret level from experience. Uh, and a fret level on its own is going to take four hours minimum. So a lot of work to be done. I'm not going to charge for little things like installing the pickups blah 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 it's, it's going to be another 10-15 minutes on what I'm already doing you know I'd, I'd be a bit be a bit nasty me to charge extra for stuff like that so I've knocked him some money off I've given him a quote of what I want for labour I've knocked him a good hour off so he's saving 25-30 quid on what I would normally have to charge anyway so I think it's all going to be good I'm waiting for him to get back to me so a little things I can do while I'm here is I can set the intonation on the tremolo blah 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 before I remove everything. I'm going to come back, we're going to check the frets. Once the frets are checked, I'm going to send him a video. Uh, once he's okayed all the work, we shall crack on with it at the first available opportunity. Okay, I've just found out something very interesting and what uh, made me a little bit, not so much suspicious, but excited was when I removed the truss rod cover and I saw this. And you might be thinking, what to get excited about there? Well, this is a like a barrel type nut adjuster for the truss rod and in my experience you only really get these on higher end guitars and I'm thinking PRS, Gibson, Edwards, ESP, any of the Japanese makers so that got me really excited because I have an Edwards Explorer and it was made at the ESP factory and that has this type of adjuster on there and all of the Japanese, I believe the Japanese Jacksons, have this type of adjuster as well. And then, so I got really excited about that. I thought, oh, really, it's a better guitar now. Then I realised, I thought, maybe removing the neck would give me more of an idea. And that probably will. But what made me even more excited was, remember when I told the owner, I says, no need to change your Floyd Rose. Let's go with this one. It should be good. And there you go. And I took it off. And that is not an, a, 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 that is not a zinc uh, thing that it will be a steel block. Why do I know? It's a Takuchi Japan tremolo block. That means this is a high spec Jackson Kelly. This is not your normal run of the mill Indonesian. I won't say garbage, but it's not your Indonesian type of fear. This will be a Japanese Jackson Kelly. So it is a good guitar with Japanese parts. Could even be Goto parts. I don't know. The parts are. They're not brilliant, but pots are pots. I have some of these pots. I bought some from China. I think they were five quid for about four of them. And they work absolutely fine. I wouldn't guarantee how long they're going to last, but they work fine anyway. But we are upgrading them anyway. But yeah, really quite excited about this now. A couple of other things I need to point out. Pickup rings I've added. This one's cracked here. This one's cracked here. We're going to get some new pickup rings. I am now inclined to remove the neck. Uh, first I need to check that the truss rod is working so I'm going to check it for straightness right here and now on camera. I should be able to use my Edwards truss rod key because that was built at the ESP factory. I would imagine also it's possible these Japanese ones would be built at the ESP plant or the ESP factory in Japan. So let us get out. There you go. I do believe I've got four different sizes of these, or three different sizes. So let's get out. I've got them marked up. 8 mil, 6.25 mil. Let's try that one. That's a quarter. It's not a quarter. 7 mil could be. And it's a 7 mil. And let me turn the camera around. So you get to see what I'm seeing here. And where are we? Let's go there. That's why I have this camera's position because I can turn it to any position I want 
and it gets me where I need to be. And there you go, how's that for you? So there you go, 7mm, got 7 marks on it there lot. And I'm just going to check, I would imagine it would be a long scale, so 25 and a half. And that's going to have a little bit of backbone in there, so let's try, let's see if the truss rod's working both ways. Oh, that's tight. And now we're now loosening it. Is it a two-way truss rod? I'm thinking it ought to be. Right, that is now completely loose. And completely loose. That neck has a little bit of relief, completely loose. How oh, quite. That's quite good. That's quite good because we had back bow in there. Let's see if it goes anymore. This will just it's not a two-way. These can't be a two-way, it's just a one-way truss rod. Look, that's great because we have a little relief in there. But that'll be pulled back to straight, we'll tighten it up and it'll be pulled back straight. So I'm really happy that the truss rod works fine. I want to get the neck absolutely straight because then we can check the level of the frets. And that is just off straight. We need to go and probably another eighth of a turn. About there should do. Let's have a look. No, we're not quite there yet. Let's keep going. Give it another turn. And there we are. We have that neck straight. I'm really, really happy with that. Maybe another just a, a nip. Don't want to go any more than that because it's now starting to bow at this end. And there you go. That neck is straight. What's good about that is now we're going to check the frets in a moment. We've got the neck lovely and straight i'm going to go across with fret rocker really really quickly while the camera is on here to see if we need a fret level i believe we do but then again i may be wrong high spot there high spot there high spot there so our two frets are high three three high frets so far Four, five high frets, six, six high frets so far, seven, yep. Eight. Oh, that's bad. Nine. We have nine high frets with the um, guitar in a level or the neck in a straight position. So we do need to give a complete fret level. I can't do any more than five with a hand file. I have to do the lot using a uh, leveling beam. You've seen this many, many times before. We'll take a steel leveling beam. This is milled, both edges milled perfectly flat. 240 grit sandpaper on that side, 400 on that side. And when it comes to leveling the frets, we do them all in one go. It's a long-winded process because it means once I've flattened the frets and got them all level, I have to put that crown back in. I'll explain all that as I get to it. This one's going to be a long video because this guitar needs a lot of work. I also need to mention that these frets stick out on this edge just here. Not too much but they are sticking out. So we're going to take a file and take a Swiss cut, number four cut file, this is Swiss file, and we'll just, we'll be taking off these edges of these frets, there you go. And we're just gonna remove the edges of these frets, just to stop them sticking in your fingers. Another job I've got to do. So we'll get all the fingerboard tapes up. We'll get on with that later. That's already a lot better there. Um, I'm going to move the camera, we're going to go across with a fret rocker, we're going to check all of the frets. Before I do that, I'm going to remove the neck. In fact, I could do that now, couldn't I? I'm going to remove the neck and see if it gives us any more information inside the neck pocket that tells us where the guitar was made or whatever. You may as well stay right there. Let me just bring the camera up. 
like I say, it's going to be a long video this one. Maybe it's going to be the longest one I've ever done. I don't know. Let's just move on. I don't need that there. I'm going to drop the guitar down. Can you see? You can see. That's brilliant. I knew this was pretty good. Once I saw, because I don't know if it's tremolo titanium, but it looks it's either brushed chrome or brushed steel. It looks to be a very good tremolo, and I thought that when I first saw it. There's a serial number on the back. It is a seven-figure serial number, starting with number nine. I will do some digging. Uh, I'm going to try and find some information on this guitar later. The body is all scratched up and battered. That's not a problem. But like I say, there are cheap pots in there, but that is not a major concern or a worry for me. Pots are pots. You know, they may just not last as long as bigger brand names. And certainly the volume has failed. So. All the bits go in a pot. All of the bits of this guitar are in this pot. Everything goes in a pot. Okay, is there any information on the back of there? No, there is not. Very, very nice though. But we know it's now a Takuchi Tremolo. Let's have a look inside the neck pocket. And what do we have? No information whatsoever. Um, we do have there in the neck pocket these figures there. I don't know what they mean, but there is a date in there. 21st of January, February, March, 21st of April, the year 2004. I don't know if you can see that. I can just make it out. I'm going to get a magnifying glass on there. Let's see where we are. Well, it could be 2009. I could not exactly make that out. Can you make it out? What year does that say there? It's 200. Is that a four? It looks like a four to me. And fourth month, 21st day. So 21st of April 2004 is likely. That's quite interesting. We do know it is a solid wood construction because of the grain there. And it's a two-piece. That's very nice. Uh, I don't know what wood that would be. Older, maybe. I don't know. But no idea. So the neck, what does the neck say to us? It says nothing. All it says is 4.11. Does that say November 2004? I have no idea. Uh, KS stamp on there. Uh, we know they use tight bond to glue the neck on because you can see it there a lot as well. So, what do we think? I have no idea. Anyway, I'm going to put the neck back on. I'm going to move the camera. We're going to go across with a fret rocker. We're going to show all of the frets that need levelling and we're going to show that the guitar needs a complete fret level. That on its own for a fret level is going to cost you £100. Um, there's really no way we can get around that because it's time consuming, it takes a long time and it is a lot of work. So when I find my zipper, as dapper, dibber, dabber, my controller, which is here, I can turn off the video, I will come back in a few minutes. So this is the last part of this appraisal video, which will all be included in the final video anyway. But this is the this is going to be the final part of the appraisal video. And what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to set the neck straight, which I already have. We have a notched straight edge, goes over the frets, and there you go. And if you see along here, we have the neck absolutely straight. There's no gap under there. Uh, if I had a light on me, I could shine it under there, but I don't have a light on me at the moment. Do I have one over here? No, you've got to take my word for it. I think you can see that the neck is straight. So what we do is take a fret rocker and it has four different lengths. And that is because we can only we only do three frets at a time because that then if we have a high fret, we're going to get a rock like that. And if we get level frets, we're not going to get a rock like that. So we're already determined that fret is high. And we're going to go across the whole length of the neck and we're going to see which frets are rocking it and which ones aren't now okay that will only determine what fret has a high spot akin to the two next to it or the two either side of it so this 
one fret here affects its relationship with these two and these two. This fret here affects the relationship between these two and these two. You know how it works. But once we get to more than four or five frets, we're not, it's not possible for us to just file that fret and get it level with those two because it's going to affect the two next to it, like I say. Once we get to four, get more than five frets, I say we're going to have to do the whole lot, which is what we're going to have to do. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to check all of the frets in the centre, the outside, and the inside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark off any ones that have a high spot. So I'm going to go across all 20, is it 24 fret this one? 24 frets. So we're going to go and we'll start on this one. And I hope you can hear it. I've got the camera closer so hopefully you can hear it. And that is high in the centre area. And the nearest to the camera area. So two points here. So that fret has a high spot. Next one. That's good. Next one. High in the middle. High again on the near side. So we already have two high frets, both in two spots. So you have four high spots over two high frets so far. Five also has high spots, so we can already see a pattern emerging here. Three high frets out of the first five. We're now going to turn over because the frets are getting closer together. Middle and far side again. Four high frets already. side that's five high frets we're already now at the realm where we need to do the whole lot in one go it's a big job it takes a long time that's always high in the middle six high frets Fret 12, by the way, it's fret 15. Okay. 17 is high across the whole length of the fret. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 high frets so far. Again, across the whole length, eight high frets. High, high, okay, there. So that is, I believe that's nine high frets. Last one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine high frets. And over those nine frets, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen high spots over nine frets. Uh, just to clarify, we're going to go listen out for the rock. Just to show you where the frets are level, there is no rock. There, there, listen for the rock. Just to show that I'm playing fair. Can you hear all that? I've been accused once of leveling some frets that didn't need leveling. The guy was even here while I showed him seven frets rocking. He's gone now, he's been blocked on all my pages. 
Don't want to mention his name. I will mention his name if he ever brings you any feedback. But anyway, here we go, listen. And that's it. Shown all the frets to be rocking with the neck straight. This guitar needs a fret level. Uh, I'm going to move the camera, I'm going to show all the frets, and then we can send this video to the owner. So I've just received a message from Darius. He has confirmed it is a Japanese guitar made in the early 2000s. I suspect this is a 2004. I also suspect it was likely made at the ESP plant. I know ESP have made, um, they made the early Kramer guitars. I had one, I had a 2004, not 2004, a 1983 uh, Kramer Focus 3000, which was made at the ESP plant in Japan in the 80s. Um, I know ESP also make Edwards guitars at, the, at their own plant. Uh, it's why I thought this might be Japanese because of a truss rod nut. I would suspect this is probably also made at the ESP plant. Don't get me wrong, maybe Takuchi have a plant. I don't know, I don't know what Takuchi do. I just know they make good tremolos. And this being a Takuchi tremolo means it's very, very well made. One of the best of a licensed one. So I certainly would not be swapping this out. I'll be keeping that. So. Let's um, see where we are with this. So my recommendation is we change the pots, uh, all the electrics, we leave the switch in there, we change the pots, we're gonna go with a Gibson and an Alpha, uh, brand new. We'll go with a Mollard mustard capacitor, that's on the electrics, I'll choose some nice wire in there. Um, regarding the uh, pickups, I'm recommending iron gear pickups. I will go and pick a set for um, for Darius, I would possibly suggest, if he wants to, we could go with, this is brand new. This was in my fender strap for a week. It is an Iron Gear Dirty Talk, a fabulous, fabulous pickup, reminiscent of the Gibson 498T, which is my favorite Gibson pickup. Uh, this is very same high output. This would be fantastic for metal, just to show what it looks like. Uh, you'll be looking at something like this in there, it's going to look quite nice uh, and another zebra at the other side going the opposite way uh, I could see that working well so regarding the frets I've marked off the nine frets you'll be able to see them hopefully you can see them right now uh, a few down here a few down here frets are marked off it, the guitar does need a fret level that is a four to five hour job with a setup in itself I'll also be installing new pickups, doing all the electrics um, and filing the edges of the frets that are sticking over the fingerboard. I'm not, probably not charging too much for that. I would think I could probably get all the labour on this done. I'd have thought £135 would just about cover everything. It's going to have, I'd imagine, six hours work. It's going to have a lot of work. Complete fret level with a setup I would charge £100 for. So I think for the rest, we're getting your Floyd Rose done, stripped and set up, and all your electrics done and your pickups installed, you are getting a very good deal. Uh, lovely, lovely guitar. I can't wait to get these stupid knobs off it because it looks stupid. Uh, I will experiment with knobs on there. Pickups, certainly I would be changing the pickups, but there's absolutely no reason at all to change the Floyd Rose. It is a really, really good unit, and I will get it set up so it plays perfectly. I am going to install uh, the fret stopper, uh, the, not fret stopper, the tremolo stopper or the tremolo blocker, just so we get dive bomb mode. This will work an absolute treat. These are, I believe, for 10 or 11 pounds. I'll find out what they're worth and I'll charge you exactly the same. I was gonna save it for one of my guitars, but I don't have it anymore. So you can have that the cost price. I will add another spring inside the tremolo cavity. Well, every spring's nice and tight anyway. And we'll also need to get a couple of pickup rings. So I will get everything priced up. We'll talk pickups. I will be thinking definitely go with the Iron Gear Dirty Talk um, for a bridge pickup and maybe we should look at a rolling mill or I would, I would think the rolling mill would be ideal because a rolling mill is a path type pickup. That's your Dirty Talk uh, for metal. But I would have thought the rolling mill would be a perfect neck pickup. Uh, as well to complement this. It does actually, we sell this as a set, we sell the dirty torque for bridge and a rolling mill for neck. You'll get beautiful cleans on the neck pickup. Uh, another option we could look at is we could put a push-pull tone pot 
uh, on there so we can split the coils if you wanted to go with that option. But anyway, that is my recommendation. Um, I would think around about £135 for all of the work. It's going to take me a whole day to do this. Uh, so six hours actual work time is going to take me eight or nine hours. So I would want a complete day on doing this. Um, I'm going to send you a video shortly. The tremolo. Absolutely fine with this tremolo. Nothing wrong with it. Seems absolutely fine to me. I would definitely stick with that. So that's the conclusion of this appraisal video. You had my recommendations. I think your parts with your pickups are going to cost you around about £100. Labour, I'm going £135. All done with a pickup upgrade. Uh, complete fret level of a whole lot. It's going to cost you £235.